Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 High Yield Concepts for Sensitivity and Specificity. So right now I am studying for my Level 3 board exam and I am reviewing these topics. Yes, they are still very relevant. And I figured that I'd make a video for all the people that may also be studying, whether it be for USMLE Step 1, 2, or 3 or Comlex Level 1, 2, or 3. These are all uh, you know, it's high yield for all of these exams, and I think it's a very important concept, so I wanted to make a video about it. Uh, you know me, I like to keep things simple, so just a couple important points. I, I feel like the first aid textbook uh, gets a lot of stuff wrong when it's discussing sensitivity and specificity. So I want to change uh, some things a little bit and, and hopefully make it a little easier for people to understand. So my important points, the first one. If you are talking about a highly sensitive test and that test comes back negative, it's going to rule out the disease, okay? On the flip side of that, if you are talking about a highly specific test and that test comes back positive, it's going to rule in the disease. And like I said, I think the first day textbook gets a lot of things wrong, but one of the things that I do like is their mnemonics and they have a good one for this. It's a snout and spin. So let's take a look at it. If you're talking about sensitivity and the test comes back negative, it's going to rule out the disease, snout, okay? If we're talking about highly specificity and the test comes back positive, it's going to rule in the disease, that's spin. So snout and spin are really easy mnemonics to kind of get the, the big view, the main concept here. Uh, and then of course, the other important point is the calculations and we're gonna be going through that. So this is uh, a figure, I did not make this, I got this from a research paper. And the paper was published a couple years ago. It was talking about the sensitivity and specificity of various signs and symptoms of cholera in Haiti. Um, but the reason that I chose this picture is because it's a very clear and easy representation of what everything is, how you need to be visualizing it, and how you need to be calculating it. So I know here it says symptoms, characteristics, etc., and culture results. You don't need to worry about that. What we need to worry about is the left side here is going to be the test and the top here is going to be the disease. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, and the way that I like to remember this is I like football. Uh, so in football, you wanna get touchdowns. So it's going to be TDs, so test, disease, just like that, positive, negative, positive, negative. If you set it up like that every time, you're gonna be very successful with these questions, okay? Uh, and I know it says things like true positive here and false negative and all of that. Those things are very important, very high yield. I'm not gonna discuss them in this video uh, because I wanna keep things a little bit uh, simpler and try and get the main points across, but those are very important. The way that I wanna look at this is talking mainly about the letters, the A, B, C, D. And we see down here that this is how we're going to be doing our calculations, sensitivity, specificity, and we're also going to be talking about positive and negative predictive value. These are the equations. Um, I don't feel like it's useful to memorize them. I'd rather just go through the concept and then hopefully you guys will be able to understand it that way. So this is a table that I made. I'm very proud of it. Uh, and I made it with a little bit of color because I know I like to do a lot of my things in black and white, but I just really want to make sure that people are setting these up right. So remember, if we're thinking football, name of the game is touchdowns, TDs. So test on the left, disease on top, positive, negative, positive, negative. If you set it up like that every time, you're gonna you know, be doing really well. Because if you set this up wrong, you're gonna get every single question associated with this uh, whole vignette wrong. And we definitely wanna avoid that. These are easy points to get and they're also easy points to miss. So just remember how to set this up. Do that every time. If they don't give you the table, if they just give you the values, make sure you set it up in this table. Okay, so now I've given you all the information. I've labeled the table, I've given you all the calculations. I'm really spoiling you guys with this, but I wanna go through each of these one by one and show what they mean, the definitions, and how we're gonna calculate them. And the way that I like to calculate these is by starting with the denominators first and then moving to the numerator. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let's start with sensitivity. Sensitivity is all the people who are positive for the disease who test positive. So all the people 
who are positive for the disease who test positive. This is why I like to start with the denominator first. So we're going to be talking about all the people who are positive for the disease. That's going to be our 5 plus 15. And then the numerator is going to be the people who actually tested positive for the disease. That's going to be our 5. So our sensitivity is going to be 5 over 5 plus 15. That's going to reduce down to 1 over 4 uh, or 0.25, 25%. So our sensitivity is going to be 25%. On the flip side of that, our specificity. The way that we get to this is the proportion of all the people who are negative for the disease who test negative for the disease. So again, I want to start with my denominator. All the people who are negative for the disease, that's going to be our 10 plus 20. And then our, our numerator is going to be the people who tested negative for the disease. So that's going to be our 20. So our specificity is going to be 20 over 10 plus 20. That's going to reduce down to 2 thirds or 0.67. So our specificity is going to be 0.67 or 67%. Now, we're also going to be um, calculating our positive and negative predictive values. These are also very easy to calculate. And again, remember, we want to start with the denominators here. That kind of makes things the most clear. So our positive predictive value is all the people who tested positive for the disease of that, the people who are actually positive, the people who are a true positive. So let's go through it again. All the people who tested positive for the disease, that's going to be our denominator, 5 plus 10. And then of that, our numerator is going to be the people who are truly positive, who actually have the disease. So that our numerator is going to be 5. So it's going to be 5 over 5 plus 10, that's going to reduce down to 1 third or 0.33. Our positive predictive value is going to be 0.33 or 33%. Our last one, our negative predictive value, is going to be the same thing. It's going to be all the people who tested negative for the disease, of that, the people that are actually negative, the true negative. So one more time, our denominator is going to be all the people who tested negative for the disease, so that's our 15 plus 20, of that, the people who are truly negative, who do not have the disease, that's going to be our 20. So our numerator is going to be 20. That's going to reduce down to 4 over 7, or 0 0.57. So our negative predictive value is going to be 0 0.57, or 57%. Now I just want to go through these definitions one more time, just make sure that everyone's clear on this. Our sensitivity is all the people who tested positive for the disease, of that, the people, or I'm sorry, all the people who are positive for the disease, all the people who are positive for the disease, of that, who actually tested positive for the disease. That's going to be our sensitivity. My apologies for the mistake. Our specificity is going to be all the people who are negative for the disease, who tested negative for the disease. That's going to be our specificity. And then our positive predictive value is going to be all the people who tested positive for the disease who actually have the disease, who are our true positives. And then finally, again, the negative predictive value is going to be all the people who tested negative for the disease who actually do not have the disease, our true negatives. Okay. So those are the definitions. Remember, if it's a highly sensitive test and it comes back negative, it's going to rule out the disease. And if it's a highly specific test and it comes back positive, it's going to rule in the disease. That being said, another thing to remember is that tests that are highly sensitive are good for screening. Why is that? Because if it's negative, then we can rule it out. Those people can be ruled out you know, on a screening exam. On the flip side of that, uh, tests that are highly specific or have a high specificity are good for confirming diagnoses. Let me say that again. I want to make sure that that comes across well. A highly sensitive test is good for screening because, remember, high sensitivity, negative, we can rule people out. Uh, a highly specific test or a test with high specificity is good for confirmation because spin, specific, specificity, test positive, it's going to rule in. Okay. I know I got a little jumbled at the end there, but I hope that all makes sense. And I hope that I was able to make this easier for everyone. 
Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave me a comment, leave me a like on my video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much and good luck with your studying.